hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. Another day, another grind. We are back here at our offices or back at work. Welcome back to the Afternoon Karak. If you're wondering if I have another first world problem, yes, I do actually. Um, well, my phone has this super cool and super helpful, um, what do you call it? I forgot what to call it, but basically that film you put on top that protects it. Oh yeah, the protector basically, the protector screen. And I got a really good one. This one is like super thick and it's super helpful. Like, the amount of times I've dropped my phone and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, nothing has ever happened to it. Of course, I do have like a proper phone cover and whatnot. And basically like it saves my life, but the last time I put it on, I mean, it was the first time I put it on this phone. When I first bought it, it was all the way, I think it was back in January, if not back in December of last year. And since then, my phone has gone through a lot to say the least like it has been through a lot of things whether it's accidental spillage i've dropped it so many times um random scratches from various things when i put it in my bag when i put it in my pockets so my phone is basically begging me to finally change the screen protector but here we are at least maybe nine eight months overdue with a screen protector so it just goes into the list of things that you say you're gonna do and then you put off and you put off and you put off and next thing you know something happens and you're like why didn't i just do that so i'm like literally on the verge i feel like i'm on the verge of a catastrophe with my phone like i'm on the verge of you know just shattering the screen if i don't go and fix my protector so hopefully today is gonna be that day and perhaps this is a signal to every single one of you guys out there to perhaps finally go and do that the one thing that one thing you told yourself you're gonna do a very long time ago perhaps today or tomorrow is the day to do it because i know the show is a little bit late maybe you're already cozy you've had your lunch you're preparing for a nap maybe or maybe you're on your way home and you already have a set of plans to do maybe scratch out one of those plans and do that thing you've put off whether it's a haircut um i don't know you want to go grocery shopping you want to make that one dish for dinner that you've been putting off for such a long time well here is your signal and this is your signal to keep on tuning into the afternoon cut we do have a lot of things to talk about kicking it off with another celebration yes new week new celebration this one continues the celebration we had at the beginning of the month and i think it would be appropriate to catch up with it before the month ends also going to be talking about guillermo del toro's next film nightmare alley we got our first teaser trailer and goodness i am so excited for this one Helen Mirren is going to be hosting a Harry Potter Hogwarts tournament of houses. Very interesting. I didn't know there were any sorts of um, like official Harry Potter tournaments, but apparently there is. And finally, there is one place I would never think would be creating a gaming range sort of a gaming furniture range but at the same time feels incredibly appropriate and honestly if it wasn't them who else would do it it is ikea they're going to be releasing it globally next month and so much more right here on the afternoon karak so make sure you're tuning in 4215 salat or do keep me company as i keep you guys company from 4 p.m till 5 p.m stay tuned and stay locked to pulse 95 What's the date? What's the date? What's the date? What are we celebrating today? If you guys remember two things, not one. The first one being that I did promise that we're going to be having as many celebrations as we can have because September is apparently filled with so many things to celebrate. And apparently September just happens to be Read a New Book Month. Now we kind of spoke about something similar a couple of weeks ago and that was Buy a New Book Month. And well, only makes sense that when you buy a new book you also go and read a new book as well i know a lot of you guys probably have new books 
but are not really new because they've been collecting dust in your libraries, in your bookshelves, underneath your bed, next to you, wherever it is, in your back perhaps, or on your Kindle, your phone, again, wherever you read books. And I know they've been collecting dust and it's just been sitting there and you've been eyeing them. And perhaps this is the push that we've been talking about earlier in the hour that maybe this is the time for you to finally do and go ahead and read that book. I am I am guilty of basically having so many and I mean so many books that I was supposed to read a very long time ago and then I just kind of I wouldn't say ignored because they are staring at me from my bookshelf and I do feel incredibly guilty like they're staring me down and just saying yeah you bought us and are you gonna read us anytime soon are you gonna do anything with us and I'm like "Mm, maybe sooner or later and perhaps that is sooner rather than later as we go through our you know to be a red list and perhaps it is the time to finally get on with it now the one of the main books that I want to go back to reading and basically finish off is the Grisha Vera series yes I know I was a little bit obsessed with it when the series came out and then the reader and me kind of took a nap and she hasn't woken up yet and I'm hoping that somehow I can I don't know maybe shake her to wake her up and be like come on it is September it is read a book month it is time to finally read that book that you said you were supposed to read you were, you were so onto it you were so going crazy from one book to another it is time to do that another book that I need to finish or at least a series and I know I talk about it all the time and I recommend this book series whenever I can and yet I haven't finished it yet because it just feels kind of heavy sometimes and it's just so beautiful and the world is so expansive and again the words are beautiful but then just sometimes it just hits too hard and I need to put a, put away that book and just take a breather and that breather has basically been a year and long now and that is the Outlander series I am on the third book and if you guys have watched the series or have read the series, you'd know exactly what I mean when I say that it can get very heavy sometimes. But it is an amazing series. So I'm again coming back to recommend the Outlander series, whether it's the book or the TV show, even though I am hashtag team book forever, guys. It is so good, so beautiful. Diana Gabaldon just basically drops you into this magnificent beautiful world with her beautiful beautiful strings of words that just encapsulate you and it's just very magical and beautiful and heart-wrenching it is definitely the kind of book you just can't stop reading even though i did pause several times but again it can get very heavy and i am very you know i'm I'd say that my heart is weak and I cannot take it on sometimes. Other books or let's say let's move on to manga because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys also have a lot of manga and comics that you've put off as well. I mean whether it is you know those manga that you started off and then just forgot about for a while or the ones that you've put on your list just never got onto it as usual. For me I've got a lot of these. I think you guys can see that there is a sort of um, let's say a pattern here with the stuff I start off things and then just um, never finish them, which is, I'd say, a curse by now. It's absolutely a curse, to say the least. So I do need to go finish off Chainsaw Man. I need to finish Witch Hat Atelier. I need to finish Chosen X, etc., etc. But I also want to start off all those anime that I used to watch a long time ago, for example, or in High School Host Club. And I want to read that manga. I really want to do it because, you know, if you guys have watched it a long time ago or you are watching it right now, you'd know that they kind of cut off at a vital point and that was like a very common thing back then with a lot of manga sorry with a lot of anime where they started off and it's so beautiful and it's so like so much fun to re- to watch and you're so into it and then they never really finish off the entirety of the manga they do not um basically make it into an anime so what do you do you resort to going and reading the manga and that is exactly the manga that i want to read tokyo revengers i did start the anime but my friends are telling me go read the manga so i think i'm gonna be doing that as soon as possible those are just some of the Uh, manga, some of the comics, some of the books that I will be picking up in the month of September because again, September 
is read a new book month. Text me 4215 Salat or do tell me what new books are you guys picking up, whether it's from your shelf or from the shelves of a bookstore. I would love to hear about it. Go crazy with those text messages and just go on and tell me why you want to read that book, comic, or manga because here on the Afternoon Karak, we do not discriminate. Comics and also manga also are considered as books. We're going to be taking a short break and coming up next, I'm going to be talking about Guillermo del Toro's next film, Nightmare Alley. We got our first teaser trailer coming up next right here on the Afternoon Karak. Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al-Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. My biasness aside, I'm not sure if biasness is a word, that's one thing. But all of that aside, especially the fact that I feel that Guillermo del Toro is one of the best directors out there. He's just so low-key, but whatever he does just has that... This very unique thumbprint that just basically screams Guillermo del Toro that basically encapsulates you and takes you to a whole new world that is just beautiful and out of, you know, just from this beautiful, beautiful imagination. But all of that aside, I mean, nobody, and I say this with utmost confidence, nobody can transport you, just like I was saying, to another world, to a fantastical world, while still keeping those elements of intrigue and horror, the way Guillermo del Toro does, I mean, it's just goodness. Like The things he does is just beautiful, whether it is Pacific Rim. I'm obviously, obviously, I'm going to be talking about Pacific Rim. I mean, it's Guillermo del Toro. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about my favorite movie and the favorite movie ever created by him. And also, if you talk about Pan's Labyrinth, if you're talking about Hellboy, if you're thinking about basically all these things that he has created over the years you could again like he's like i said you can know that this is something that he has done because nobody can transport you to another world the way he does mostly because he is quite passionate about the genre of horror and the way that he still keeps that element of horror very subtle but at the same time take it to this fantastical interesting world and that is exactly what he does with us in this new R-rated noir movie set in or around a carnival, The Nightmare Alley. And it is starring none other than the great Bradley Cooper as Stanton Carlyle. He is an owner of a nightclub and a mind reader. And he becomes entangled with Kate Blanchett's character Dr. Lilith Ritter, a psychiatrist who was out to debunk him. If you watch the trailer again, just that mystery, that intrigue, the darkness, the whole thing of what is lurking beneath the surface, what is going on. It is very reminiscent of that era. I believe it is the early 1900s, perhaps the late 1800s, and it looks very, very beautiful, very interesting. The narration in the background is just enough to get you so interested in the entire story, gives you enough to understand that there is some sort of mystery with some sort of creature that he is being chased around that there is some uncanny things that are happening in this town and it was honestly this is what i mean when i say a teaser trailer because even though yes it is a little bit longer than it should be i mean i think what are we going to do about it i feel like all the studios and production companies have kind of just given up and just started giving us two minute to three minute long teaser trailers and we just need to live with that i guess but what they do is just enough to keep that mystery going and basically um guillermo is very notorious for doing that especially when it comes to teasing his movies if you guys remember crimson peak i mean the ending even though i haven't watched it but i do know what happens mostly just the way he kind of teases what happens, even though you guys might be getting some sort of idea. And then there's always some sort of twist at the end. Same goes for Pan's Labyrinth. He's well known for that movie. It is, I believe, and I, I would say part of my childhood, even though whether it's a kid's movie or not is up to your interpretation, your beliefs. If you think that any kid should be watching that or not, that's a whole other discussion. But as I was saying, it is just beautiful. Basically, Del Toro, as usual, teases 
the usual monsters because what is a del toro movie if there isn't some sort of monster in it or 20 to say the least um willem dafoe is also part of the teaser trailer he appears to be some sort of interesting character not much is known about him besides the fact that he's giving off very ringleader vibes so i believe that he is the ringleader of this carnival that is being hyped up throughout the trailer as the one that houses this very interesting creepy creature or monster that will never be seen ever again afterwards and honestly it looks very beautiful very interesting cannot wait to watch it it's going to be coming out on the 17th of December and it just follows basically Del Toro's role as he takes on one project after the other because we have spoken about his upcoming Netflix anthology that is going to be coming out I believe either in October or November and honestly if you think of jo uh, the ho uh, horror genre and you don't instantly think of names such as James Wan and Guillermo Del Toro then you're missing out because those are I'd say the pioneers of the genre in the present time because the way they take on those stories is just out of his mind out of your mind same goes for jordan peele cannot forget him of course so guys check out the movie when it comes out and we're also going to be checking it out when it comes out i'm going to be giving guys a extensive review all the way on the 17th of december and also important to know that this is based on a novel from 1946 by william lindsey gresham it is grounded around the horrible things people do and that is like a common sort of trope when it comes to, to looking into carnivals and the deep dark history of carnivals we're going to be taking a short break and coming up next i'm going to be talking about helen mirren who's going to be hosting a harry potter hogwarts tournament of houses and ikea's gaming range basically some gaming furniture that's going to be coming out globally next month <sighs> make a hot cuppa and relax it's afternoon karak with aisha al mazmi and mikhail atia on pulse 95 I love me any sort of quiz show and this upcoming quiz show is going to be an interesting one because I believe it is one of a kind as it is going to be concerning the Harry Potter franchise. It's going to be called Harry Potter Hogwarts Tournament of Houses. Basically, it is going to be um, starring or at least being run by Dame Helen Mirren as the host of the entire tournament and it is a Harry Potter quiz show. It's going to be airing later this year to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the film series and it will be broadcasting simultaneously on Cartoon Network and TBS and eventually stream on HBO Max as well. So basically it's going to be a four part special that according to them will unveil Wizarding World fans willing to put their Harry Potter knowledge to the test for the ultimate honor to be named House Cup Champion. I think this is an idea that um, should have happened a very long time ago. They should have basically done this, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or when it first kicked off because honestly, they could have capitalized this on basically every single year, having people come in and just be tested on their Harry Potter knowledge. Yes, I know that the series ended a good while back, so maybe they might run out of questions at some point. They could have done it, I don't know, maybe two every two years, every four years. I don't know, like the, the World Cup, something similar to that. But it's going to be quite interesting to watch because, again, one, I love me any sort of quiz show. I will watch any sort of quiz shows because they're just hilarious and they're fun to watch. And if you guys know me, you know that I love Jeopardy and I love all those um, those kind of shows. There's just so much fun to watch. You basically increase your knowledge and more often than not, the hosts are fun to watch as they inter interact with the actual contestants. So it is a very, very great genre. You guys should definitely get into it. Quiz shows, they're available on Netflix, basically wherever you want to watch or do watch things. I mean, even on YouTube for a very long time, one of my favorite shows, QI, quite interesting. It is from the BBC and I cannot watch it here in the UAE as long as I don't think I can watch it 
here in the UAE. So basically what I do is every once in a while I used to go on YouTube and there is this person who uploads every single episode and I would just sit there and just binge watch one after the other. It's just so much fun to watch. And in many ways, it was only a matter of time that this sort of thing should have happened, especially since if you look at Warner Media and Warner Brothers in general, as they slowly start to realize that they are sitting on a treasure trove of IPs, one after the other. They've got, they're basically sitting on the whole Harry Potter series for the longest time ever. Basically, the Harry Potter fans are probably starving for anything because they've only got The Cursed Child, which was sort of a play on... Um, the future of what happens after the book series and nothing really happened beyond that there were no games no tv shows no movies and then we kind of got um the fantastic beast and where to find them and it's kind of there's a whole controversy about it with johnny depp and whatnot so even that kind of went down the drain and there is also lots of issues with jk rowling herself so it's like a whole mess all in all so i think maybe it's a bit late but i'm glad that they're taking advantage of it perhaps they're trying to um basically reinstate this whole series because the fandom is alive and well they're everywhere i mean even i'm not that into that series i'm barely into that series i mean yes i watched the entire movies while growing up but beyond that i wasn't that much of a harry potter fan but i'm still quite interested in my in pottermore and i'm still quite interested in which house i'm in whenever i get the opportunity to boast about my house even though i am in gryffindor which is very expected for me to be in gryffindor and i'm kind of upset about that i wanted to be in hufflepuff but i still take every opportunity to tell people that hey i'm in gryffindor actually like it's just a part of um, the things that we grew up with so it only took i can't believe it took them this long to finally take advantage of this title and this ip and start giving us the things that and even give the fandom the things that they've been craving for such a long time especially since we're also going to be getting that um rpg open world game that they've been promising us that kind of has been they've been very quiet about for a while but again we'll be getting news about it whenever we can they haven't really told us the exact date the special would be heading hbo max because again if you don't have those uh, direct broadcast through cartoon network and tbs you might miss out on it i'm pretty sure there's gonna be some really nice samaritan who's gonna be posting it up on youtube but a lot of people might want to watch it on hbo max as well but again most likely i'm guessing sometime earlier next year or a little bit after the show simultaneously broadcasts on tbs and cartoon network and again dame helen Mirren. who doesn't want to watch dame helen Mirren host a quiz show super excited to watch it when it comes out eventually whenever it comes out and our final story we're gonna wrap it up with ikea's gaming range furniture again simultaneously something that i would have never thought i would be saying but at the same time makes a lot of sense because as i said earlier in the hour if there isn't i mean which what other company would you think could have done that besides ikea it only makes sense, right? Gonna be talking about that. 4215, or do Tell me your Harry Potter houses or your Wizarding World houses. Again, I am a Gryffindor, which shouldn't come as a surprise. It shouldn't have come as a surprise when I found out, but I was quite surprised and a little bit upset about it. But we make do with what we have. I'm gonna be taking a short break. And as I said, coming up next, that IKEA gaming range furniture only here on Pulse95. <sighs> Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. I know a lot of people when they think of any sort of, well, gaming furniture, they think about perhaps those high end um, sort of chairs, the desk, some, uh, some stuff with ergonomics and whatnot. Basically, things that would make um, gaming a very comfortable experience or as comfortable as it can get but I'm pretty sure none of you ever thought yeah the gaming desk from Ikea because that is not something that would come to your mind instantly especially since the new Ikea lineup of gaming themed furniture and accessories 
has only basically debuted in China earlier this year as a collaboration with ASOS and its Republic of Gamers brand. But it basically announced that everything will be available in October globally, basically worldwide, which means that you guys can head down to our nearest IKEA and get your own gaming furniture. Now, I'm looking at those pictures and you guys should look them up too. And they look pretty, pretty cool and pretty sleek. And I'm not sure if it's the IKEA effect. Did you guys know what I'm talking about? Because I feel like IKEA is really good at marketing those beautiful high-end-ish kind of looking rooms when they're beautifully set up. And honestly, shout out to whoever does those setups because they are really good at what they're doing. They really almost always just capture your eyes. Daydreaming and just imagine your entire life in that room, whether it's a bedroom, a living room, a kitchen, wherever it is. I just look at it and go like, hmm. I, I really want to live there, like really badly. I want exactly what they've set up right here at my house. So honestly, again, when you look at it, they have everything. I mean, even things that would allow you to stream if you want. I mean, they even have a phone holder to keep your view in frame if you're streaming through your phone. And a lot of people, streamers all around, they do stream through their phone sometimes, or sometimes they use both their phone and their webcam for different angles. So it is just very, very smart. Again, I know that this is a collaboration with ASUS, so it means that ASUS also was probably knows the thing that they're doing. But honestly, I really gotta see that IKEA really does study their, um, their basically the demographics that they're aiming for. Because like I said, they always know how to capture your eye and be like, yes, I think that this is something that is necessary for me. And the lineup ranges from cheap desk accessories, like a cup holder for $10, or a mouse bungee for $12.99, all the way up to gaming chairs costing between $69 all the way to $349, which I love that. They give you a whole wide um, range of prices for people who want to maybe go for something cheaper to something a little bit high end. And again, that is also something notable from IKEA, which I always love. And they also have a $5.99 standing desk. Again, very, very smart of them and also very creative of them to include all kinds of things. Basically, there are 30 IKEA gaming products in total, and that is gaming furniture, not literal gaming products. And they are arranged across six product families which means that they are basically in a whole bunch so that will help you guys kind of you know better visualize what kind of things that you want honestly if i were a new gamer or a gamer who's looking into maybe some new things some new furniture for my setup i would definitely go and check out ikea because honestly ikea stuff usually lasts a very long time and i always like has that appeal that you know the sleekness that slim clean look to it and again if you look at the range of products the pictures look beautiful to say the least and the basically obviously they have the entirety of the range in beautiful sleek black very very pleasing to the eye and again shout out to their marketing team for the pictures and everything because i don't have a gaming setup and i don't think i will have one anytime in the upcoming future but i'm looking at it i'm like hmm I think I need a desk and it's again it's a problem because all the furniture in my room is brown and I think it's gonna end up breaking up that um, the color scheme just for that furniture again even though I basically when it comes to gaming I'm more of a console person and not of a PC gamer so I don't know honestly they're really very good at this would you guys buy some gaming furniture from Ikea Again, I think put me up on that list because I think I might be. We've had a lot of fun throughout this hour. We spoke about all kinds of books that we should be buying and reading because September happens to be Read a New Book Month because it's following up with September also being Buy a New Book Month. So it only makes sense that we follow it up with this celebration. Also spoke about the upcoming Harry Potter tournament. Also spoke about Guillermo. I don't know they spoke about I was fangirling for a good like six seven minutes about Guillermo del Toro and his upcoming movie Night Nightmare Alley that's gonna be coming out sometime in December so if you guys missed out on any of those conversations make sure you check us out wherever you listen pod to podcast and that can be on Ngami's 
Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Just search up Afternoon Karak and you will find us there. And if you want to see my beautiful face, again, as I go off and rant off about all kinds of things, you can also check our YouTube channel. We do a stream live whenever we count throughout all of our shows and we upload our videos a little bit later. So check us out, Pulse95 Radio. Subscribe, like, and comment. We'd love to hear from you guys. And with that, I wrap up and leave the desk for the amazing duo that is Big Hat and Anna Schofield. From Yalla Home, keeping you guys company from 5 p.m. all the way till 8 p.m. Only here on Pulse 95. If you liked this episode of Afternoon Karak, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.